this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use an alternative to the if statement. Uh, this isn't something you can use in replace of every single if statement because it's not quite as flexible, but it is a good alternative when you are aware of the exact answers uh, or data that may be inputted because it is a really nice, easy to read syntax. And it's, it's called the switch statement. And so the syntax of it is you're just going to type in switch and then you're going to give it, pass it some kind of parameter like X or you know whatever the variable may be. And then you're going to uh, put a parentheses or start of the brackets and then you're going to give it a case like case one and then semicolon and then you tell it what to do in that case so you can alert or you can run some type of function something like that so uh, it, it, we're gonna build out one um, that is a guessing game and uh, I'll show you how that works this won't be a dynamic guessing game but it'll show you exactly how to use a switch statement and how to pass data to it and then get it to run functions uh, based on that data so very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a uh, guess prompt so we're gonna say var guess and we're gonna type in prompt guess a number between one and five okay and then we're going to actually set up you could put in string literals into the switch statement but so that it's a little bit easier to read I'm gonna set up the variables here so I'm going to do var num1 equals 1. It's also very important because we're getting the data from a prompt, even though we're giving it an integer, we still have to pass it in as a string literal and uh, or else the switch statement will not work. So uh, that's just important. Make sure that you are passing in, uh, you're putting parentheses around the numbers. If you try to do it another way, it's not going to work. Okay, I'm almost done. Bar num four equals four, and bar num five equals five. Okay, so we set up and initialized our variables, and now we can build the switch statement. So we're gonna do switch, and the parameter we're gonna pass it. We're gonna pass it that guess variable that we just built, and then start the brackets. And our first case is going to be case num1. Going to give it a semicolon, and then we want to alert saying you missed the number. And then after that, you have to type in break, a semicolon, and then you can go on to the next case. Now, the one nice thing about this is you can actually pass in multiple values into the cases. So I don't have to go and say, you know, copy and paste this uh, and then do, you know, num2, num3, num4, that kind of thing. Uh, I can actually pass in, if I want that function to run and it's the same thing for every one of them, I can pass in multiple values right here. So I'm going to pass num1, 2, 3, and 4. So if someone guesses 1, 2, 3, or 4, they're going to get the answer, you missed it, in an alert box. And then we're going to do the next case, which is a case where they guess the right answer, which in this for this mini game it's going to be num5. And now we do the same thing, do alert guessed it and then give it yeah make sure you have to do a break statement if you do not your program will break uh, and it will not work and after you give all your cases uh, you can also give a default response and this is really important because uh, this is if similar to the if if else type of uh, program uh, what the default is is it's the else it's if case one isn't met and case two isn't or uh, 
case uh, num5 in this case or the second case isn't met it will go down and then it will run whatever you put in the default so in this case this would get run when someone types in a number uh, that or a, a string or something that is not in the 1 to 5 range so you're going to say you didn't give a number between 1 and 5 and then that will get run. You don't have to write a break statement after the default you can just put default and that is it. So we're gonna run this and see if it works. So you're gonna type run, give a, guess a number between one and five. If I guess five, it says you guessed it. So that's good. If I hit run and guess number one, it says you didn't give a number between one and five. Oh, why did it do that? Because that's not accurate. Let's see see what happened there it actually bypassed both of these and went into the default so that means there's a problem with the cases let me pull out these and run it okay that says you guess the number let's put in one of these other ones two miss the number and I don't edit these parts out on purpose because when you're building these you're going to make these same exact mistakes because I've been doing it for a long time and I'm still doing it so uh, let's see okay what well, the issue is here is The issue with this is I actually wrote this out wrong. I wrote it uh, from a different programming language. Um, that will happen uh, the more languages you learn. Uh, in JavaScript, the way you have to do this is you have to do case num1 and then just copy that and put the same one right underneath for two. And three. And then we'll do one more and four. Uh, what was happening when you put all on one line, it's just going to that very last one. So here, this is the proper syntax in JavaScript to do it. So we'll click here and go, let's type in one. You missed the number, perfect. Type it in again and you missed the number. Now let's do check our validation. So I'll type in 100. You didn't give a number between 1 and 5. And so uh, you can see the way the flow of the program works. First, it checks the, these first cases right here. And then it pass, if it meets any of those, it automatically stops, runs whatever is here, and goes on the next thing in the program. If none of these conditions are met, it goes down into the second case and it gives that function. If none of those are met, then it goes down all the way to the default and it says you didn't give a number between 1 and 5. So in summary, the switch statement is a really nice thing to use if you know all of the, or at least most of the potential things that are, uh, are uh, data um arguments that are going to be passed in. So if you know that you have a small portion of possible answers and they're exact, you're not trying to do things like uh, greater than a number or less than, if you know the exact uh, things that are going to be entered, this is really a powerful thing to use in JavaScript in all programming languages uh, because it's uh, very easy to read. So if you notice, if you compare this to some of the if statements we've used, this is very simple. It makes a lot of sense when you're going through it and when you need to come back and edit the program. It's really nice and easy to use. It's not something that can completely replace an if statement, but it's a great way of uh, being able to give a data argument and then run a function based off of that.